What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast show. Uh, my name is Paul Verzi, and you guys are listening to episode 500, part two. Okay, I put the first one out thanking you guys for listening. Uh, the show's growth over the last, you know, pandemic, building a studio. I wanted to talk to you guys. Thank you guys for the show and everything like that, for listening, subscribing, liking. But I also wanted to do something special on part uh, 500, my 500th episode and do part two. And I was thinking about who to have on the show. Who can I really have? And then I talked to my producer and I said, Andrew, the great Andrew Themlis. I said, Andrew, who do the people like? Who, who do the people want? Who is the best podcast guest? Who makes it easy? Who makes it fun? Who takes out the best in everybody on the show? And you know who came to mind, everybody? The man, the myth, the legend, one of my close friends. Uh, he's one of the funniest people on the planet. Um, he's responsible for truly one of the worst nights of my life in my lifetime, which is always a good history, good memory. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him from the YKWD podcast, his amazing comedy special, his amazing stand up, and he's also a fantastic actor. Should I still keep, should I keep going, Bobby? Ladies and gentlemen, no. my good yeah. friend Bobby Kelly is on 500 The Verzi Effect. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I have a bone to pick with just the word close. What you, you could have just went a little further and said closest. <laughs> you said one of my close and I thought you were going to go to closest, which <laughs> tightens that circle up just a little bit. It, it, it knocks out a couple people, which one makes of, me feel a little better that close. OK, I'm close, but closest just knocks me into that, knocks a few more people out, squeezes yeah. me into a smaller circle of people. And um, I'm just saying. Well, listen, you know that I have a, a, a you could count on one hand people that I love in this business and you're one of them. But this is how the mentally ill. This is how mentally ill people think, guys. I listen. said the nicest things about this man. I called him a brilliant actor. I said you love it. I said he's one of the funniest people on the planet. I said who makes every show better and what wow. he took from it, what he took from all of that, wow. his, his wow. mind got stuck. When I said one of my close friends, he that's where he got stuck. This is why I love I, Bobby. I want you to play it back too, because it very it felt very scripted. It <laughs> it wasn't. It was. It was he's not one scripted. of the guys. He's the guy. We called the thing, and then we. Oh went God! There, I didn't mean to do that. A, a little scripted. A little scripted. All right. Well, you know I don't. I mean, you didn't even look up and go. I mean, one of my closest. There was. I mean, if I was if I was casting. If, if I was casting this part, right, to play with like Matthew McConaughey or yeah, you know, or, you know maybe Denzel, and I'm like, and and you're giving a speech to bring him up to win an award or something, yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like, that was great, Paul. Uh, this time, feel it more, feel your friendship, and all use right. the word closest. Don't use close, closest. All right. Well, because that right. tightens well, it up a little bit. Well, you know, I'm not scripted. I woke up 10 minutes ago. OK, Russian. Well, I know you woke up 10 minutes ago because I got the invite for this 30 seconds before uh, 11 o'clock, which is <laughs> another thing with you <laughs> phone to pick. I if I have to do something at 11, I wake up at nine. Yeah. Yeah. Get no. My coffee. I do all the things that yeah. I have yeah. to do so that 1030 I'm ready to go. Everybody's gone. I put. I I I I uh, put the stuff in the pool. Uh, I called the pool company. Uh, I sent an email back to Craigslist for some shit I bought that the guy fucked me on that I drove forty eight minutes in New Jersey to buy, and yeah. he had a, a mailbox that you put the money in, you can't get the money out once you fucking get. All right, he wasn't. Uh, I cut wire, fence wire for the garden. Uh, I, I I mean I, I've done a lot of things. Yeah, I, I hit the snooze button four times today and now I'm here. So that's well, that was my that was a, as you were doing that. I was telling my kids, don't let my phone die. OK, wake me up at 1030 and fuck it, you know. So that's that's the dude. You just made me laugh like you already. You made me laugh. So you let made me laugh so hard. Um, Bobby, thank you for being on the show. You did the Verzi effect, I believe, two other times. And uh, everybody absolutely loves you on the show. I can't believe I've done 500 of these. Uh, I didn't give a fuck about the first 400, apparently. 
<laughs> but um, I wanted to talk to you about camping. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm very, I'm very excited about this. Yeah. I'm very excited about this because this is another case where this is one of those things in life where somebody doesn't take your advice. Somebody yeah. doesn't heed the yeah. warning. Somebody doesn't listen. Well, here's the thing. Doesn't listen. Here's the thing. It's You're like right. when the kid doesn't listen and he gets hurt. Yeah. Not bad, but enough to where he's crying. And you yeah. in your head, I fucking told you not to do that. <laughs> well, this is what happened. I, 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 I didn't take your advice, but then I realized that if I had taken your advice, um, well, let me let me just get into it. So sure. my stepfather, okay, great dude. He, he was like, let's 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 go take the kids. I'm going to take the kids camping. You should come, blah, blah, blah. We picked a day, and they picked this day a long time ago. So we didn't, obviously, we didn't know about the heat wave. Okay. We didn't know about the 94 well, and humid. You can know, I say something, though? Yeah. You do know about summertime. Yeah, you do know about summertime, but you don't think when it's literally late June, it's going to be a heat wave like 94, 95. That usually happens in August. Okay. So, oh, wait a minute. So, but, yeah. Okay, but yeah, the chances of having the sun out and it be hot in late July as opposed to January, February, March, December. I mean, we go on all the the, yeah. the, the three months that you might it might be hot. Okay, fair. The three months it might be hot is June, July, August. Yeah, those are the only three months. <laughs> yeah, and this we, is the heart of it. Yeah, that, yeah. the heart of it. They even yeah. let kids out of school because <laughs> it's too hot. Okay. All right, all right. Well, fine, fair enough. However, didn't think it was going to be two of the hottest days of the year. We thought, okay, we could deal with 80, 85. We didn't know it was going to be ninety four and humid with two little kids. But whatever, we have a great day. We get there, mm -hmm. we set up camp. Mm -hmm. We set up camp quick. We actually right. put one of those tents where, with the picnic table under it. So the shade uh, pop up tent kind of big size. The tent kind of went up kind of fairly quickly. We got the tent up in like, I would say, 10, I, 15. I, I just want to take I'm going to take notes while this is happening. Did you just say I, I have a little dry erase board I'm going to use right now. Did yeah. you say you put the picnic table next to the tent? No, we put there were two parts of the of the campsite. There was one part where you put the tent and then there was another part for like, like to eat, like where, where the, where the picnic table would be and where like the tent over that would be. And it's kind of like a little further away from the tent. You had a tent over the picnic table. Yes. You had a separate tent. Not even a tent. One of those things where it's like four long oh, legs and oh, then yeah. on top. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, before you pick this shit apart, I mean, let, let me. All right. So anyway, we get there. We put that up it's quick. Wasn't that bad. It's hot, but we were in the shade. Our site, our lot. We got a lot that he picked in the back. So it was kind of covered with sun. So no, this isn't that bad for at least during the day. Right. So we get a fishing poles. We go down to the dock. No, no fish. Got a couple bites. There was some trout in there biting. Nothing big going on. Took the kids, jumped in the lake, cooled off. Okay, now it starts to get close to dinner time. Walk back to the site and cook. Step by cook chicken, barbecue sauce, you know, so he some corn on the cob. All right, it's not bad. Then we take a deck of cards out. Now the bugs start coming out. Now the bugs start coming out. I would say we had a ton of bug spray. We had all that shit. He had a lantern thing that the, the light when it started to get dark, like one of those, but it wasn't like, um, it was like a battery one. So you, we put that in the middle of the, of the, the thing that was over the picnic table. It lit everything up. We played go fish. Then my daughter, then now it starts getting dark. Okay. It starts getting dark. You hear people setting up for you hear people getting ready for either making fires, you know, where, oh, by the way, all the wood, by the way, all the wood that was bought on the campsite, there's a place that sells it. The wood was a little damp. OK, so yeah. one mistake we made was we thought it was really dry. We didn't bring fat wood 
and it took us a little longer to get the fire going, but we did get the fire going. Right. Now we wind down because by the time we got there, it was three. By the time we went to the, the lake, fished, set up, did all, it's almost dinner time. Okay. Now it's getting dark, playing cards. It's like, all right, who wants to go? Do you want to go in the tent now? We go in the tent and it's hot. Okay. It's hot. Now we, there's no electricity outlet. So if we did, I didn't take your advice. I did not take your advice by getting a fan and bringing an extension cord. However, I see the place on the tent that shows where the extension cord wire goes. And I go, oh, that's what Bobby said. And he goes, yeah, there's unfortunately there's no. Now, granted, there was a town right there. I could have. If there was a place for electricity, I could have gotten the what you said to do. No electricity. So you're in the campsite, even though your car is there. What's that? What? What is that? What? What does that do? No. It's a, it's battery operated. You never told me that. Well, I have to tell you that things that are a plug in. There's also always a version of it that it runs on batteries. They uh, even do it with cars now, Paul. Yeah, I know. But I also heard you say, Paul, get an extension cord and make sure you did tell me that you didn't say get the ones that are portable to hang over. Only you would have that. No camper has that. Nobody has that. Every camper has this. That's why they make it. Was that on Shark Tank? No, no. It, dude, this is a standard for any camping situation. Oh my God. It just, okay. a standard. I have three of them. It has a light on the top. Okay. You can hang this down. Uh, this uh, keeps the bugs uh, away. Oh, he came prepared, everybody. Look, look. Oh, God. All right. No, we had electric. Zip, 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 zip. No, it's not. It's electric. See, that's zip, just zip, zip. that's just lunacy, though. That's crazy, but that's great. What is that? The knife. All right, we had a knife. We had two knives. We had a big one that made sense, and then we had my Swiss Army pocket knife. <laughs> okay, uh... So I swear to God, this happened, though. This happened. I'm not making this up. I swear to God. And my, my, my stepfather goes, wow. I go, I go, that's going on the podcast. We pull up. Now, my daughter, you got to understand, my daughter's already scared. My daughter's never, both of my children have never been camping before. Okay. She, 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 her father took her back into the 1600s. Yeah. yeah yes. No so, water, no electricity. Yeah. She should be scared. She's scared. She's worried. We pull up. And some fat chick opens the window and goes, yeah, okay, what lot are you, right? And I swear to God on my, this is not to be funny. I said, this has to go on the podcast. She goes, listen, you need to clean up all the food. There have been bear sightings. Now, both of my kids hear that. The whole car hears that. So my daughter's nine. And she goes, there has been bear sightings. And then I kind of, I wanted to look at her and go, what the fuck? Can you fucking, th can you, can you lean over? Can you, can you, do you see children in the back? Okay. First of all, I'm scared. Let alone, I don't know how my nine-year-old, you know, little girl's doing my son. She goes, there has been bear sightings. Don't worry though. They're very small. We haven't seen the mother yet. Okay. That's what she says. So now in my mind, in our minds, there's some killer mother bear roaming around like fucking Jason Voorhees that nobody saw. That's going to make the fucking big entrance when we fucking camp. That's, that's how that's how I take it. Like, oh, the mother hasn't been seen yet, but the babies and then and then she goes and the little ones are real scared. They just want food and they're real scared. Nobody's seen the mother yet. So that's how we <laughs> enter the park. That's how we enter the park. OK, I mean, yeah, that, that listen, listen, dude, this is. One thing everybody knows about bears. Listen, you just don't want to be near a mother and a baby bears. That's all they say. If you're going, if you see a baby bear with the mothers, that's trouble. And the first thing that she says, yes, is literally describes that say that situation, but worse because the mother bear is nowhere to be found. Yeah, we have it like the mother bears, like like, like an ex con who's on the lamb. That's how she said. She, it. But that that's saying that the mother bear lost her cubs. So when she does show up, she's going to fucking not. She's not only going to be pissed at these motherfucking dumb cubs. She's going to snap whoever the cubs are with you. Would you take my cubs? 
fucking piece of shit. Yeah, he would yeah. down it with hot dogs, hamburgers, and fucking potato chips. I got him up here eating berries the way they're supposed to eat berries. I got him up yeah. the mountainside yeah. away from you fat fucks. And then you, you now they're down here again. Yeah, yeah. I should claw your fucking face. Let me yeah. take one of your little cubs up where I'm at. Have some berries. She basically said to my children in a non-direct way, anything you hear tonight could be a mother bear looking for her cubs. I mean, that's how that's basically how we she said, anything you hear tonight is probably going to be the death of your father. Somebody's going to die tonight. When you hear a crunching sound, <laughs> pretty much yeah. your worst fears as a child, all the things your parents told uh, you, it's not true. That's yeah. not, don't worry about it. That is going to become reality tonight for you. And yeah. you're going to be dragged into the woods through yeah. poison yeah. ivy and trees like a piece of fucking prosciutto yeah. uh, up the mountainside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is where you come in, because wow. I was thinking of you, of course. Anytime I pull up to a campsite, I think of your face and get angry. OK, Why? even though I love not, I love you, not in a bad just because you love it. You love it. And I know when you get there, you get excited. And all I'm thinking about is like, how how much can I minimize this nightmare? OK, um, we get in the tent, Bobby, and we're laying there. And my son is on the far side, my daughter, then me, then kind of further away down the tent. By the way, you were right about the tent. That's the other thing I thought about as I was staring. You want to laugh as I'm staring up at the tent? OK, my stepfather said I was sleeping and snoring and keeping them up. But when I wasn't and they were sleeping and I was sweating and uh, I'm laying there, I'm looking up at the tent. This is it could have been in a comedy movie. I'm laying up at the tent. I'm looking at the ceiling. I look around. And I think of I'm thinking of you going, that thing doesn't sleep 10 comfortably. Right. And you were right. OK, oh. this thing had four comfortably. One more oh. would have been uncomfortable. OK, yeah. one more, one more would have been. So when they when these tent company for any tent company out there saying, oh, sleeps 10. Yeah, of course. it's you, you. I mean, you could stack 50 in there if you want to be disgustingly uncomfortable. But I'm talking about sleep yeah. when I think of sleep. When somebody says, oh, sleeps comfortably, yeah. I mean, if my arm moves, if my leg moves, I'm not kicking somebody. I'm comfortable. OK, I told you that you I told you that I said you're used to sleeping in your bed, your bed, your king bed. What do you have, a king or a queen? I got a queen, I think. I think it's. Oh, God. Oh, my. What, what can you? Yeah. Who the fuck? I mean, it was my fault. You I... Upgrade your life, please. Yeah, you I get know. A king bed. I know. Queen, what are you fucking Archie Bunker and fucking Edith? <laughs> Anyways, King, you yeah. have a king. No, Dude, you're yeah. used to sleeping in your own room. That is a room for two people. If you add two more people to that room, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You understand that? Now, yeah. when they say 10 person, they mean four. When they say four, they mean two. Right. When they say two, they mean one. When they say one, you better be thin as fuck. <laughs> when okay? they say 20, it's like seven. Yeah, dude. It's it's because of the way we live. Now, yeah. hikers in these granola crutches, they'll sleep fucking 10. They'll sleep five over here, five over there, two over there. They don't give a shit. OK, they're smelly. They don't give a shit. But a man like you, I said, you wear fucking rope chains. You match your sneakers. To, yeah, a, yeah. to a dot on your shirt. OK. And now you're going out in the woods. I said three things to you. I said to you, it's, <laughs> it's too many people in a fucking tent. And you were like, dude, it's a 10. And we only have four people. OK. I said, yeah. get a sleeping pad, get a sleeping pad, buy a mattress. Yeah. I said, bring your own pillow from yeah. your home. That I did. And I said, please get a fan. Yeah. Get a fan. Yeah. Just get I a fan. If if we had a fan, it would have been all right. Um, there were rocks under me digging into my hip. There were I, I was laying on. a. There was at one point my ribs. I remember all I felt my rib cage just laying against hard, hard dirt. I I was I went like this one time at like two in the morning. And you could have the water. I, I was I was pouring sweat. Um, um, it was literally I can't believe how my kids just toughed it out better than me. My daughter 
was, you know, she was uncomfortable at, at one point. Uh, the, the kids go, oh, this is miserable. <laughs> My little kid, we're sitting there. And then, uh, oh, at 12, at, at 1230, my stepfather goes, I just can't sleep. Let's just go for a walk with the flashlights. Let's just go for a walk and look at the stars. So at we walk 12? Well, at 1230 because none of us could sleep. We were, all, all you heard was people tossing a turn and saying, ow. All you all you heard. Was you didn't people, get mattresses. But no, you couldn't have got a mattress. I got I, mean, I got a, a, I, I brought a big, big like quilt comforter and I put that down and then we put on the, on the ground. On the ground, and then we put we threw it out. We threw it. What are you fucking John Wayne? <laughs> what are you herding? Are you fucking herding cattle? And then we uh, listen. Yeah, <laughs> even those guys slept on a buffalo hide. I uh, mean, what the fuck, dude? I told you, get a fucking sleeping pad. Go th- listen. Uh, this is America. Oh. In the deepest part of the woods, there's a Walmart 20 minutes mm. away. Oh. Okay. You could be in the most remote part of America yeah. within 20 minutes. I could have you at a Walmart with a fucking yeah. fucking fan and a sleeping pad. What's that tennis racket thing you got? This. Yeah. This is electric. You push the button and you fucking whap them. Zip, zip. It's like an oh. electric fly swatter so well, here's what i camp and yeah did you now did you light a fire yeah they usually had the smoke they had those what's that usually the smoke from the fire will let make the bugs go away yeah we had we the, the like i said the 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 wood wasn't as dry as we liked so it probably took us a little longer probably took us 25 30 minutes longer to get the fire where we wanted and we noticed we noticed that other camp lots we're, we're having trouble with, with the, with the wood because where you bought the wood, the wood seemed dry. And then when you cracked it and broke it, it was moist. Um, we had what was that place called again. We went to the, um, we went, it's on the border of Massachusetts. It's a uh, Taconic state park. And we went camping up to the uh, Bisbash falls and the Bisbash falls are on the Massachusetts side. So we What's hiked the name of the campsite. It's it's a state park. It's called Taconic State Park. Oh. So Taconic State Park is about an hour twenty minutes from from uh, me, and we right. uh, yeah. But like my my mom, and they're in Pekip, almost in Poughkeepsie, and it's like an hour and ten from them. I don't oh know. It's all, I mean, the lake is nice. What? Yeah, we as a matter of fact, they jumped in a lake. It was like shockingly cold, but like refreshing. Um. Yeah. You know, they don't have electricity that this is I mean, dude, you went you went like camping kit. You like I. Well, we had the car there. What we like you said, we did have the car there. It's car camping, but it's it's like old school car camping. New school car camping is um, like where I me and Lewis go. We go to um, like a Yogi Bear or a KOA. And dude, they have water at the campsite. They have electricity at the campsite. We have a projector. We watch movies on the side of the tent. I mean, all right. At at night, during the day, they have the pool. They have the bouncy thing. They have the carts. They have the mini golf. They have the lake. The uh, it sounds like you're camping in a fucking mall. It sounds like you put a tent in the in the Palisades Mall next to the next to the go kart racing in Buffalo Wild. I tell you what, at night we're fucking comfortable. Here's what I would do, though. This is what I learned, Bobby. This is what I learned on this trip. Yeah. I don't mind the woods in doses. I didn't mind. As a matter of fact, I kind of enjoyed the fishing. Yeah. Jumping in the lake wasn't ideal because let's be honest. I mean, some of the people that go to real camping are disgusting animals. I mean, this one kid smelled. I never saw somebody get out of water and have a tank top on, flip flops and a bathing suit and smell the way he smelled. I went like this. I went, eh, I get, I went, ah. When he walked, when he went by, he had faded tattoos and I started gagging and my kids were looking at everybody on the dock was looking at me because I started gagging. OK, some like some. I, dis- I can't deny that. There's a lot of there's a lot of dirty people like that, like the uh, camping scene. Yeah, they would listen. Some nice people, some people that looked like they had their shit together, but a lot didn't. OK, a lot. I saw this one fat guy. He was like 500 pounds. You couldn't see his fucking bathing suit. And he was sitting there with a plastic glass of red wine. 
one of those plastic glasses you get. And he just was sipping yeah, it yeah. with his wife, just talking to him as he was sitting there like a king on a bench. His whole fucking it was just I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie. Half of it was gross. OK, <laughs> it was just I saw some of the lowest human beings that I wouldn't I wouldn't be caught dead around. I wouldn't be. I took my kids. We walked past a pack of pe- pack of people like that. I took my I huddled my kids like this. I said, I said, hold your breath. I swear to God. I said, hold your breath. And we walked we walked by because I didn't want to subject them to what it was. Now, that being said. I would do this. I would do luxury camping. OK, I would do a, t- a cabin. <laughs> Glamping. Not luxury. Not luxury. Like yeah, not luxury. But 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 I would do a cabin mm-hmm. with a little TV for the kids, you know, right. comfortable air. Even right. if the cabin was in the woods next to a creek, I decided I would do that. If you give me a bathroom that's on my own. Now, they did redid all these new bathrooms and showers. So I didn't do it. I didn't do it. my stepfather. But oh, the bathrooms and showers were brand new, just done this year. Uh, so if you had to, that wasn't, that wasn't awful. You weren't going to go to the bathroom there. I could honestly say in the 26 hours that we were there, I didn't shit there. Would you have? Listen, if push came to shove. Yeah. I mean, if I had no choice, yeah. But you know, it's funny. My bowels knew because right when I got home yesterday, I, I, I felt it. My body was like, all right, let's release this. Take a shower close your eyes and let's, you know, but I will tell you this, the three worst nights I've had in my life. This is the truth. Actually, the three worst sleeps I've had in my life, aside from having the flu, being sick, being ill, the three worst sleeps I've had as a, as a normal human, healthy male. Okay. Have been on a campsite. One, my pillow was in a puddle. Okay. When I was in high school, me and my friends, when it it rained, my pillow was in, I I was sleeping in water Two was with you when you gave me that paper thin one man tent when I had nothing, nothing. I could have died. I could have died. It's actually a miracle. They could make a documentary how I got through tonight. 62 degrees. Not down there. It wasn't. Well, I mean, 62 degrees in fucking basketball shorts and a tank top on dirt. It's not. I, you had a blanket. I know. I gave you a fucking flannel blanket made in Vermont. Literally, for I mean, it was one of the warmest things. I gave you that blanket. Well, your wife did. If in in fairness to Dawn, she said, "Bobby, you should get this to Paul." Do you remember everything? Yeah. (laughs) I love you. I love you. And then the third, the third was having my two little ones next to me and my stepfather, and I was profusely sweat. It would have been like, "Hey, do you want to make you want to sleep in a sauna tonight?" It'll be off. It'll be off. There won't be it won't be cranked up. But do you want to sleep in a sauna? That and then my stepfather, you want to laugh to make insult to to add insult to injury. My stepfather just goes, "All right." He had like one of these apps. He goes, "All right, it's eighty two degrees in here." Oh my! And I and I I go, "Yeah, I know, I know it is." Look at do the blanket. I just rolled it up and threw it out in the dumpster on our way out of the campsite. You did? Yep. What was it on dirt? It was no. There was there were two layers of like you first have the. You have the first thing. No, you have like the the tarp, which goes first. Yeah. Then you have the bottom of the tent, which goes over the tarp. Okay. Then we had a big, thick kind of comforter that laid down. And then on top of that, we had uh, sleeping bags. So the kids were kind of comfortable. The kids, the kids were kind of okay as far as like the ground. Uh, Me, I was... I mean, I, you want to laugh? I felt the big rock because we tried to kick the rocks away as, as we set up tent. And I, I guess we missed one. I felt throughout the night this one big rock by my hip and leg. And I just, and, and I just had to sleep around it. It was. Dude, I told you. I mean, I can't. Why? Why did you? I mean, I just don't understand. This is what I don't get. You're driving up. You could have fought, you probably passed five targets. No, no, Walmart. no, we didn't. The route, the route, it's one route. The route is you basically take route 22 miles and miles and miles up. And yep. it's, and you don't, when you're on route 22, um, yep. we saw some Dunkin' Donuts. We saw a strip mall with pizzerias and shit, but we didn't see any, there was no, there was no camping. There was no targets or Walmarts on the way up. You know, I'm going to Google this right now. 
and I'm going to find fun. What do you think the people do from your house to fuck in the Berkshires? They what? What do they you think they just shop like at pharmacies and shit and they go to Dunkin Donuts? That's all they got. There's not. I mean, you go five minutes off the highway just because you couldn't see it from yeah. your eyes like a fucking Indian on a horse that it doesn't exist <laughs> four minutes up the street off the highway. You, you literally you are have, a, you yeah. have a magic device. It's magic. It's yeah. fucking magic. <laughs> you have a you could have said, hey, and you don't even have to type it in anymore. Look at uh, hey, uh, you, uh, hey Siri, find me a Walmart. Listen. <laughs> and and this there's a magicness, <laughs> in this thing, right? Literally. There's magic in here, right? Walmart Vision Center on Tetabra Landing Drive in Tetabra. And Is I that the one you want? I told her I wanted her to have an Irish accent. I what? gave her because I wanted her. I understand. She has an Irish accent. There's a magic woman that lives in this box. Wait. That hey, hey Siri, find me camping. Hey Siri, find me camping supplies. And she'll talk to you and she'll tell you. She just brought up 15 Walmarts. Hold on a second. Hey Siri, can you do like a an English accent? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something you just change it inside the settings? Oh. Go to no. Siri and you can pick English, you can pick a guy. I used to get mad when Siri gave me directions cuz she sounded like my wife and I'm like, I'm not going that way. So I had to change the voice to a dude. <laughs> Um, listen, I, I in all fairness, I am somebody that didn't know I could watch the UFC fights on my phone. So uh, I'm just saying yeah. that I said to you in advance, in advance, not the day of, in advance. No, I called you the day of. I mean, what do you remember? Everything? Yeah, I called you day of. I mean, and I everything. Said, what are you, an elephant? You got to fucking remember every fucking detail. <laughs> but you listen, you are good with being prepared. You are. Buddy, when I went camping with you, I had a blanket. I had everything. Yeah, I remember. When, when I go camping with, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you was you were sleeping like Snow White in a fucking hammock as I was trying to survive through the night using my breath to keep my heart warm. <laughs> I I was actually blowing on my heart with my breath so I could, didn't have a heart attack while you were while you were oh. while you were swinging you were swinging and sw you you had a nice little fucking motion uh, it, it was unbelievable what you did. Listen, listen, okay. I, 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 I told you, I tried to help you this time because I knew what you were getting into. I knew what you were about to do. Okay. And I was there for you. And I just told you a few things that's going to change your life. Yeah. Okay. And if you called me and said, buddy, there's no electricity. I would have said, get in the car. You're going to drive around 20 minutes. You're going to find a Target or you're going to find a Walmart or a Kmart, any one of these stores, and they're going to have a fan. I'm get You don't think people go to that campsite and go, it's so hot. Oh, all the years. This is the first time it's ever had a fucking, it was hot in June, late June. I think June. it's been there for like 70, 80 years or something. So you don't, you don't think that somewhere in the neighborhood, somebody was like hey, supply and demand. There's yeah. a lot of hot fucking assholes over here in tents because they don't understand climate. Uh, okay, they've uh, they've been inside their their Westchester fucking split level ranch, <laughs> cranking the AC for ten years, and and keeping a constant seventy degrees, whether heat or cold, making yeah. sure it's what it is. Now they're out here; it's eighty five degrees at fucking eleven thirty at night. Maybe yeah. we should get some fans. Oh, yeah. there's no electricity. Well, they sell these other things. They have batteries in them. You can hang it right from the top of the fan. You can get a couple of these and everybody's uh, happy. Oh my God. Now this is where it gets this is where it gets crazy. It this gets is, crazy? It gets crazier. It gets crazier. You ready for this? Yeah, let me light my bat. Go ahead. Yeah. This one you're not gonna believe. This one's gonna take you over the top. So finally, my stepfather and I go, listen, man, we can't. Another night of this is just plus, you know, my daughter was like, look, guys, one night was fine. You can't sleep like that. We agreed. And uh, they said that more humidity was coming, maybe some rain. We're like, look, we already had the plan. 
we already had the plan that we're definitely doing one night with the possibility of two, but with the heat and the possibility of rain. And when we started packing up, it started to pour. So we felt like, all right, we made the good decision. And I'm thinking of going home. And I'm like, I can't wait. I'm going to go home. I'm going to crank that air conditioner to 65. I'm going to take a hot shower and wash the grossness off of all the chemicals that are around me, bug spray. And I'm going to lay in my bed, okay, with just my boxer briefs on. And I'm going to watch playoff basketball till I fall asleep. And I'm going to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And I'm going to, I'm going to just be home. I get home, okay? I'm tired. I didn't sleep. I was on and off sleep. I get home. My stepfather said something really funny. He goes, isn't it funny when somebody says they didn't sleep at all? Meanwhile, they kept you up snoring all night. He goes, you fucking snored for seven hours. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing with me, by the way. Yeah. Um, I go into my house. And the air conditioner is broken. It's 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 80. It's 82 degrees in my house. And I looked oh. at the thermostat. I go, Stacy, what? He goes, yeah, we got a call. It's kind of cooler down here. I go, I go, no, 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 no. Going to a hotel. And we got to me and my wife got to fight. I go, no, no. I'm not doing it two nights in a row. Like, I'm not doing it two nights in a row. Okay. And, 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 and I told you how miserable it was. I told you how fucking miserable the night was. So how come no talk of the air conditioner being broken came up? How come that didn't come up? Okay. So I go, I, so I go into the bedroom and I go to the thermostat. I start hitting the thermostat. I'm now I'm angry. Now I'm like, this is some, this is God is getting me now. I said, I'm, I'm now I'm upset. Okay. I could deal with it on the campground. I'm not coming to my fucking home, not coming into my home and, and having it hot. So I'm starting to hit the thing. I crank it down to six. I'm hitting cool off, cool off, nothing. Then it's coming on for a second going off. I call the air conditioner. Play. I got emergency here. You got to come out. She goes, oh, we don't have any text till tomorrow morning. I said, I got little kids in the house. I got a little, what's it going to cost? So I call another place. Oh, we'll be there first thing in the morning. I said, about tonight. What about tonight? I start freaking out. <laughs> so then I text Stacy from upstairs. Stacy's downstairs. I text her from upstairs. And I said, we're going to a hotel or we're going somewhere. And she goes, no, we, I go. We're not sleeping here tonight. So we're so figure out where we're going because we're going somewhere. So she goes, I told you to call the company before you left camping. So then that happens. Did, and I go, I, she, called, I go, yeah. And I go, I, I called, I go, they're coming Thursday. We have a, we have a spot Thursday at 12. They're coming, but I can't wait for now till then. So we need to, get, we need to, so me and her get into, I mean, we get into it for a second. She was granted. She was, she was right. Hopefully she never hears this. Um, and then, and then finally at like, when, when, when I'm at my wits end, probably around like seven 30, all of a sudden it kicks on. And over the course of two hours, I see my house go from 80 degrees down to 70 something. And we end up sleeping like a baby because the thing went into the sixties last night. So for whatever reason, either way, they're still coming at the, 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 the unit may need more Freon or something but the central air unit may need like just a maintenance. Cause it's like, maybe, maybe cause it got so hot yesterday. I don't know what it was, but something happened to the unit where it was like kicking on and off. So, um, but I came home from camping after sweating in a sleep, mm -hmm. sweating in a sleep, excited to walk into my home and go, ah, excited. <laughs> I, I envisioned that. I envisioned like when Tom Hanks got out of castaway. I know I'm exaggerating. I know that's a lot, but I, I, envi <laughs> I envisioned just going, Oh, now I could, and, and I walked in and it was, it was like, we were at the campsite in my fucking living room. It was like, I was at the campsite and uh, luckily it kicked on. We did sleep. We did sleep through the night. We slept good. So, um, I will do a, I, this is, I will say this though. You give me a fishing pole. This is what I learned. You give me a fishing pole, a nice spot off either a dock or like a, a place where I could cast out. Okay. Sit down, relax. And I could sleep in a cabin for two nights. I would do that. So I let me just can I say something to you? Yeah, I just got I just got. My wife just got stung by a bee. She just texted me. She got stung by a wasp. Oh, no. Is it, is it bad that the initial thing in my head was like, yeah, that's for the things you've done to me. <laughs> is that bad that the, the first thing that I thought was like, <laughs> that's, that's God. That's my, 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 my God going, yeah, I'll get it. Don't <laughs> worry. Listen, it's not ideal to think that first, but when you, you see the thing about you and me, and I think why me and you get along, I mean, I don't know if you remember, and by the way, I do have an incredible memory. Um, me and you were at expectations yeah. in Montreal 
and we were sitting down eating. I don't know if you remember this. This is when we first were hanging out. Me and you, I think, when we really became friends, friends, like, oh, I could hang out with this guy I was in Montreal. Because, you know, when you go to the Montreal Comedy Festival, you kind of migrate to like two or three people for like your time there. And like you yes. go out and eat with them. You kind of yeah. have things, you know, so you, me and your you, crew. you get a crew, you get like a crew of guys, you know, me and you, me, you and Bob Marley went to the movies. We, you know, we, so anyway, I remember the, remember the waitress was on her phone and this is one of the first bonding moments we had. The waitress was on the phone and I'm going, where's our, where is she? How come she's, and then I look, I go, look how much fun she's having. She doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't care. She didn't care. She's working. So finally you go, wow. Versus you go, you go, you go, I never saw this side of you. Cause you know, like, oh, you seem like a easy going, nice guy. And I go, I am, I go, but this, I can't. And then she can't. And then you go, oh, I like it. I like it. That's when I knew that you have what I have a little bit. You get resentful and have vengefulness. Uh, and yeah, I have right. it too. Yeah. We have that yeah, in common. It's not a great thing, that's, but it's a Sicilian that's it's in us. It's it's just yes. Vengefulness. It's, yes. And revenge is just in our blood. If somebody does me or you wrong and then we found out, hey, they got hit by a car, they're alive, but they got two broken legs. We'll go. I mean, look, the guy, yeah. you know, comes back. It's not like there's, there's certain people that went died in COVID. And I was like, yeah, it's not good, but it's not bad. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it's not it's not good, but it's not bad. I mean, I'm not. I'm not I'm not, you know, I'm like, you know, well, let me ask you this question. What someone like you. If somebody does you wrong, somebody just did something to you, said something to you, whether it was an action or or speaking to you that really bugged you and it stuck with your in your head for five years. But through the five years, you did shows with them. You were on podcasts with them. You still have a love for them, but you always and never, ever forgot what happened. And then you're having, let's say, um, a barbecue or you're going to have like four or five guys go to the movies and dinner and then smoke a stick, something like that. Does that person get excluded with that? Even if the five years has been great. And like I said, you've been on podcasts with that person, but it's sitting back here. Is that person an invite or or is that a left out just because of what happened in the past? Um, that guy's not coming to your house, right? Or is he? I mean, look, dude, I, I'm I'm very particular. Let's yeah. put it this way. If I invite you to my house twice. Yeah. Yes. And you don't come. Yeah, you're out. You're done. Yeah, I I have three. I have three. So if I say, yeah, if you don't come to, if I invite you up to my home three times and you don't come, it's, you're pretty much not coming. Now, especially if you've asked, if you came to me and was like, why don't I get, and then I go, all right, here you go. And okay. You know, I can't make it this time. And then, all right, well, here's the next time. Well, I can't. uh, Well then fuck you. You just, you know, you're done. Yeah. 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 You're done. And there's certain people. I mean, of course, I mean, that guy who smoked a Cuban and put it out. Oh. Never. I mean, never. Yeah. Well, it goes to show the host you are. He gave a guy a cue. I tried to warn you. What can you do? You were like, no, no, you I, did the right. You were actually right, because this is what you said. I don't know if you remember. Uh, I remember. But he you said, I'm just you, you said, no, no, no. Like, he's at the party. These people are all getting that. And I'm going to like you were actually a very good host. You're going if everybody at this party is getting a Cuban. I'm not going to not give this guy a Cuban because he's not a smoker. But when he put when he took like four puffs and then just left it in the thing and I was staring at it, I'm going, yeah, that's that's. A but I asked guy. him, Verzi, I I did. Uh, I laid down a foundation. I did research. OK, I didn't just get some dick, a fucking Cuban, a Hoyo. I said, you oh. smoke. Yeah, I'll smoke you. This is a Cuban now. You got to smoke this. Enjoy this. This is not just some shit cigar. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Because, you know, because I because that even came across to him as a little aggressive, like I'm being a dick and I'm just letting you know. And then, of course, three puffs and he's fucking sticks it in ashtray and it almost went in his ass. It almost he almost got that in his asshole and out the fucking down the driveway. But 
Uh, Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing with. Look, as I go later in life, I really don't give a fuck about as much about as I don't have the energy for revenge. But I do know I do know I say this all the time. If you sit by the river long enough, the the bodies of your enemies will float by. It always happens. It always happens. If your instincts are righteous, yes, if you are correct. If you are coming from the right place, those people that are fucking pieces of garbage, yeah, will fucking float by you at some point, and you just get to just smile as they go by. No big yeah. hurrah, no nothing. I knew that guy. I knew she was this. I knew they were that. And there yeah. you go. They got yeah. their little fucking comeuppance. No, that's. I'm trying to think. You oh. never did. Well, one thing you did that that I'll never forget in a bad. What? Was... <laughs> no, no, no. You never. You when we went what camping, though. No, no, no. When we went camping. Yeah. You gave me your backpack or something. Yeah. I gave and, you everything. And I, yeah, you did. You did. And I put the backpack down next to a tree. And you go, what are you putting it on the ground for? It's like, I, I, I thought it was an outdoor. I, I, I'm sorry. I thought it was an outdoor bag. I didn't know. Did, no, 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 no. Should I have I'm hung it up? Listen. Should I listen to me? Should I have hung it up with dry hang with, uh, <laughs> you know, dry cleaner hangers up on a branch and, 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 and picked off any piece of lint? I mean, I thought we were outdoors. I, I, and this is an outdoor bag. I put the bag down. I wasn't trying you, to disrespect your bag. I'm, I'm not saying you were trying to do I'm trying. Look at my teaching techniques are maybe a little abrasive, maybe a little this boy's life. I mean, are you going to coach? Are you going to coach Max's teams? No, I'm not coaching <laughs> that fucking shit. If you if you shit. coached Max's team, the amount of mothers. Stuff. <laughs> oh, dude, I had to sit. Yeah. I had to sit. I had to sit in the bleachers by myself. No, in the, in the sun bleachers that nobody sat in. No, because they're all like, oh, good job. Good. Everything. I'm like, what the fuck? Come on, swing the bat. Keep oh. your eye on it. What is this kid? I had to go sit by myself. Because it just came out. Yeah, you yeah, you you being like a coach to your because and you you're like a, you're a competitive guy. You want to win. Uh, I think you're very good with kids, so I think you'd be OK with a loss. But I think if you had some lazy ass kid that like was like very spoiled, I think the mother would come approach you for sure. Oh, I had to stay away from the mothers because they were applauding the other team. <laughs> they were like, good catch. Eh, fuck your son just hit a triple. And this little <laughs> cocksucker made a lucky catch. He made a lucky stab. And you're complimenting that little fuck. Fuck him. You should have uh, a lucky catch. Oh, my God. That's dude. the problem. We're not teaching kids competitive to be competitive anymore. We're not teaching kids. No. To be fucking competitive. No. And, no. and to win. We're teaching kids to be victims. And we're teaching them to be fucking uh, okay with not getting, trying to fucking uh be number one yeah it's okay to just have fun and life isn't fucking fun no no the and older you need... get the, the you... oh fuck yeah it. and you need you need some mad. sort of you need some sort of competition to let people know that there are just people better at that sport and there's yes. nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with that but if that kid is just better at the sport then you yeah. as an individual have a choice you're either going to work hard to try to get to that kid's level and compete with that kid, or you're going to do another sport. But the idea that, no, we're just having fun here and nobody cares. It's like, that's not, that's a weakness. And I think somebody was well, somebody, was it you who said that there's some scientific thing out right now that shows that like testosterone levels are like down scientifically. Was that, was that Probably. you? That wasn't me, but no, no so like that. There's like, th I would this agree whole, with that. there's whole fucking thing of like, you can't kind of, there really does seem like there's like anything that it's almost talked about as aggressive and bullyish. If you're like, no, let's go fucking get it. But right? here's the thing too. Here's what's the problem is because you think that the government and all these people are trying to make a better, uh, nicer place to live in America. Well, here's who, who here's who's not going to be nice and here who is going to be competitive and ruthless and cutthroat and fuck you is the politicians, those the rich people, those fuckers 
Yeah. Are, so now you're going to have a bunch of just lambs <laughs> out there fucking being nice to you, not offending it, not being competitive, not being, you know, aggressive, not having not being guys. Right. Yeah. But all these fucking scumbag politicians yeah. are going to be doing that. So we're just going to yeah. be out there slaughtered because yeah. nobody knows how to fucking take care of themselves. And everybody's a goddamn victim and everybody's a fucking pussy. And, 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 and you're going to have a bunch of, and, and, and they're not going to be those rich people are not going to be No, no. I mean, look at who runs the fucking world, social media, Facebook, Google, YouTube, media they're, too. Yeah. They're yeah. the ones who are fucking telling, dictating everything that's happening. They're the ones causing all this shit to go down. They're the ones and, instigating yeah. fucking people to rally up and treat other people fucked up. Yeah. You know, they're getting everybody fucking whipped up, giving everybody a fucking platform. It, it, it's it's and, and, and they're telling us not to be competitive, not to everybody should be treated equal. You don't treat everybody equal. Right. Those the people who run that shit. Yeah. Don't treat people equal. You have a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. How is that fucking equal? Why do you need that? Yeah. Sorry. I yeah, it's wrong. funny. No, no, you're right. It's funny. Like, you know, even guys yeah. like Bernie Sanders who want to oh, read. Fuck him. He wants to redistribute like money. But that you know how much money Bernie Sanders has? Millions. Yeah. Bernie Sanders has Bernie Sanders and his kids and his grandkids never have to worry about money. No. You know, these these lawmakers are 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 going, no, you need to treat that person like this. You need to. And they, they're in a gated community with armed guards outside their home. You can't go. You can't walk up to fucking Bernie Sanders. Dude, if and, you and walk, fucking... if you walk up Nancy Pelosi's driveway and and, and, and and the armed guard that's there goes, if you take one more, say he'll put a gun, he'll put a bullet through your head. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. Like I'm I'm just like you know, I I think yeah. that kids need to be kids and and listen, man. I mean, look, can I say something about Bernie though? As far as politicians goes, yeah, you know, he's he's the least of the scumbags, I would say, because you know, what's her name, Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, her net worth is far above fucking. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Well, you know, yes. the only reason why the only reason why I use Bernie is I wasn't even talking about him being a scumbag or a bad. I'm just saying when guys like his main point was money. His main point was this percentage of people shouldn't have this amount of money. And I'm just saying that if you look at Bernie Sanders bank account compared to 90 percent of people's bank accounts, then it's just I'm just saying it's a little bit. He's, he's got he's a, he's got three million. Nancy Pelosi is one hundred and fourteen million dollars. Uh, something tells me Bernie Sanders has a little more than three million dollars. I would say net worth is three million dollars. He probably has more than that. But he you know, he does live in Maine. Nancy Pelosi is one hundred and fourteen million dollars telling us how we have to distribute wealth. One hundred and fourteen million dollars. One hundred and fourteen million million dollars. Yeah. 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 And uh, a lot of those politicians have that type of money. So it's just weird to me. It's just a weird, you know, I feel, uh, I don't know. It's frustrating because I just, I, I like life. I, I just like, you know, our generation I thought was pretty fucking cool. Even though we, we were abused. If you could somehow take the abuse out of, our generation, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think our parents were all right. You know, they just yeah. hit us and yelled at us and, you know, and we were taught about sex in a fucked up way. You well, know? Younger. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that our parents did the best they could, even with the mistakes along the way. But there was still love and caring and like they tried to, you know, now I feel like now I feel like you know, kids calling the cops on their parents if they, you know, a kid could call a cop on his parents right now and like tell them and, and tell the service that the parents are unfit because like, you know, yelling, hit, you know, like, I mean, listen, we decided to not hit our kids. I don't know what you do with Max. We don't we don't hit our kids like we I, I made the decision with Stacy. I'm like, look, I want to try to you want to know it's funny that came back to bite us. 
because now, you know, they, they get away with shit. I'm like, oh, dude, if I could have just wrapped them in the mouth right there. <laughs> You know, if I could have just wrapped them in the mouth right there, but I don't want to do that. And we've never done that. But sometimes they'll, they'll fuck. They get out of line, dude. They get out of line. And you're like, fuck, did I create that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, fucking weird, dude. But, you know, you know, in the reality of it, we're not even going to be around for the end of this shit. We're just going to fucking do our comedy, do our comedy around 60, call it quits. Do something else. I'm going to be fucking living in New Hampshire. On my land, camping with a fan and a fucking bug <laughs> thing and all kinds of amenities. Just be so comfortable. Not, yeah. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Comfortable. So, yeah. yeah. I Next don't know. time we go camping, you will rent the Yogi Bear place and you can go into the, the little they have a cabin with TVs and bathrooms and a stove. And I'll I'll stay outside. No, let's get like a seven bedroom. Like, let's get like uh, that's 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 not camping. That is not camping to me. If that is, cr- that's just staying in a shittier house. <laughs> Why would I rent a shittier house? Uh, well, I we have can- trees in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? I have a fire pit. I got a pool. I got a zip line. I got a pirate <laughs> ship. I got a vegetable garden and I got a fucking uh, I got a, do- a fucking stop and shop five seconds down the road. Why would I fucking do that? That's hysterical. Can't, the, you, the reason why you go camping is to in, it, 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 it enhances your life. So when you go home, barring the fucking AC works, I'm yeah. sorry yeah. about that. But when you go home, you're like, wow. But I still think you should be as comfortable as you possibly can. Okay? Why do I want Yeah, My stepfather said that he goes camp. It's not about fun. It's about just dealing with like, and doing. And it's like, but why think about what you just said? Think about the logic of camping. It's to appreciate the things we don't have. We have them now. We fucking have them now. I'm not in the 1700s. They had to do that to get us mm-hmm. to where we are now. I don't have to fuck. I don't have to sleep shivering and fucking have a, a beetle. Keep keep hitting yeah, me. But, here. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, Paul. <laughs> you don't, you know. Here's the thing. <laughs> the, the part of being out in the woods is that you're you're feeling that is that it's like, yeah, there's bugs, there's animals, there's, there's all kinds of shit could happen. But you're out there like a man lighting a fire, cooking food, and you're not comfortable. You're living the way people lived for up until 50 years ago, nobody had AC. Yeah, no, 1902. Nobody had AC. My, when I grew up, we didn't have AC. We had fans. Yeah. You had a fan in a window or in a living room. Burr, burr. That's what you had. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, now everybody has AC. Everybody's got a nice car. You wonder why this fucking lands go. We're going to fucking shit quick. Everybody's <laughs> got nice shit. I Back in the day. What? I'm going to show you this guy. This is the man right here. This man. Can you hold on? This man right here. That's Willis Carrier. Willis Carrier invented the air conditioning in 1902 in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's the goat right there, everybody. That's the reason why you live comfortably right there. I tweeted yesterday uh, when Kevin Durant said his mother was the real MVP. This is the real fucking MVP. This guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. This guy is the reason crime is down. This yeah. guy is the reason people can live in Florida and Arizona and te- all those fucking hot places, dude. Um, yeah. AC is AC is clutch. My stepfather was telling me that they actually make tents. He said you can get like tents for thousands of dollars that actually have a little AC unit in it. Like you a, could, like, you, you, you could. I'm telling you right now, dude. If you could get a fan in that tent, yeah, you would have been you would have been set for the night. You would have realized, oh my god, fans are great. Yeah, fans. You, you would. It would have been a game changer if you got one of those square box fans and just stuck it right at the opening of the tent. Plug that fucker in if you could have got electricity and it would have just shot across everybody. Yeah, you would have been like you would have been like fucking game changer. This is great. 
I'm going to keep an old mattress. Whenever we get a new mattress, I'll keep the old one in the house, strap that thing to the hood of the car and bring it to the campsite and throw that. Don't bring a mattress. You fucking Griswold. (laughs) You just, they have blow up mattresses. Yeah. But by the time you're done, it's they're deflated halfway. You know that. That's not true, dude. Somebody That's needs to go true. to Shark Tank. I want somebody to go to Shark Tank and get a mattress that no air comes out. I want the pressure taken at night, and then they I have want the those. pressure taken. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 called uh, self-inflatable mattresses. There's foam inside, and air gets in it, and it, it it like goes up. You can get that. You can buy sleeping pads with no air. You can all do right. all that. I just bought. You know what I just bought? What I bought cots. Aluminum yeah. cots. You yeah. fold them open. You lie right on the cot. Yeah, that's no ground. Good. Listen, nobody does it better than you. I, I'm, I'm not saying that to be. I'm being serious when it comes to because you're a guy that you you like doing things outdoors. But let's be honest, you want to be comfortable and you do it right. You're you know, you're yeah. you know, you're going to be the guy to get the first cot inflatable fucking thing on the cot. You could talk to the cot. The cots, the cot could could, could go to a military base. You, you could say, "I'm in the, I'm in the new cot. Can somebody get out here? I need a helicopter." I mean, you're you're gonna have that. I know you're gonna have that. And I'm gonna be freezing my dick off, sitting next to you, going, "I, what do you? I, I wish I had a cot I could talk to. I don't have a cot." And I well, talk? I I think we should go camping again. Yeah, we. Under the right conditions, yes. I think we should do primitive camping again in late August, early September. Me and you go up. We do another night. Let's get a camera crew. Let's film it. Let's document it. Why? But why? Because you are going to do that anyway. And that's what well, you did. But why don't we do this? Why don't we just go up? I'll find a spot in the middle of nowhere and we do it. Hold on. Do you remember setting up a camera and going walk by? And then you go, no, no, no. Hold on. Walk by. So if God forbid something's in a way you, you were don't filming. My, don't, don't fucking tell my illusions. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What are you a fucking one? We want to tell the, uh, the no. fucking end of the new James Bond movie. You know that too. Oh, so, sorry. We're walking through the woods and you go, Hey, come on this angle. There's nothing wrong with that. That was the path of the trail. I don't know, but I'm just saying we could get a fucking camera crew out there doing, it. I'm sitting there with a, with a hat on, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're holding a shovel that you told me I had to use to shit. I mean, yeah, you had to shit. You had to shit outside. Um, you're four hours away from anywhere. Where are you going to shit? What, a helicopter or a shit plane in? No. And they, we, come we down, they, let, they put a toilet, you shit, and then they take the toilet away? No, we there's didn't. No, uh, there's no shit helicopter flying in. You got to shit by an oak tree and bury it because that's trust, what humans you trust, do. You'll find something one day. Dude, you need to shit. I figured it out. Here's what you do. They came out with this thing. Okay? You shit in a box. You throw it. They do. They it's do. You can shit that. It's a that, drone. The yeah. drone takes you shit. And it dumps it. No, listen. Um, I don't know, man. I would definitely think about. I would definitely think about doing something in the in the future, um, under the right conditions. But I need a break, and I, I need. I mean, I may never do it again, though. That's also on the table, right? You know, that it is also on the table. The only way I think I could ease back into a night out, the what me and you did. Now that I did what I just did with my family, yeah. What me and you did was complete lunacy. I had no business being out there. <laughs> I know. I mean, when I, I saw what you I mean, did, dude, yeah, how dark it was, where we were, we hiked up. There was no way back to the truck. I was going to die. If you if something happened to you, I might have not made it. No, if something, if, if something God forbid happened, you didn't make it through the night, if God forbid you got eaten by a, I don't know if I would ever made it or found my way back. Well, yeah, where we went, if something came through, if something happened, we were we would had to deal with it. We would definitely have to deal with it because we were an hour and a half away from the car in what? the middle of the night. Yeah. Oh my so god. A- we were an hour and a half away from the car. That's how long uh, the drive was for me to go to the campsite. We were an hour and a half a walk away. Yeah, if you went mate, you're gonna but he, he, there's three trailheads, so you gotta make sure you take the right one. Um, that's when I was, when I was shivering, I actually contemplated trying to make my way with a flashlight to the car. 
you would have to get the blanket and you would have just found me. You would have you would have found me maybe 15 yards away from where me and you were sleeping. With yeah, you, yeah you would have you would have there's three trailheads you probably would have went down the one and both of them one actually goes into some sketchy snake area if you remember we were going to take that other trail to halfway through yeah and, and then we were walking up and it was very high grass and i was like dude this is this is where rattlesnakes are yeah and i remember that woman by the way the woman and the son and the dog with the dog yeah. that's yeah. why i didn't bring the blanket they they we were getting out of the car, getting stuff and they came and you go, what are these people? And we started talking to them and then I just walked away. But remember what she said? She goes, don't go that way. There's a lot of snakes. Yeah, I'm never going again. I'm never going. Why? Camping. I'm good. I'll go into a cabin with a gun. That's what I'll why do. you can't bring a gun. I think I can. I don't think you can. If I have it in the, in the trunk with the ammo would, in another place. Yeah. Oh, what are you going to do? So something happens. You're going to go one second, Mr. Bear. You're going to run outside. Give me two more minutes. Let me get the ammo. Okay, <laughs> no, if, back. if the ammo goes in a glove box, the gun could be in the trunk. Yeah, that's going to take five minutes to figure that out. <laughs> While the bear's ripping your arms off. Yeah, you might as well not take it. Oh, Bobby, man, this is this is why I oh. wanted you on episode 500. I know you got stuff to do. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, guys. This is the Verzi effect with um, one of my closest friends. Hey, uh, sounds better, doesn't one my, it? And one of my closest friends, Bobby Kelly, one of the funniest guys out there. Bobby, plug anything you got coming up, bud. Just go to my patreon.com slash Robert Kelly and, and all my stuff's up there. And then robertkellylive.com for all my dates. Uh, they're all packed up again. I'm all over the place going to Vegas this weekend. Uh, Comedy Connection. I'm doing Punchline Philly coming up. A uh, lot, of, lot of shows happening. So, Well, everywhere I go, man, and, and I'm at a place where you were at, everybody, you know, and they tell me, oh, who are your friends? And I mention you. Everybody talks about how funny, how great the shows are. So go see Bobby. Guys, I just got some shows added. I'm going to be shooting the next special in September. I got Nashville added July 30th through the 31st. I'm only doing two shows. Tickets for that will be available. Um, I think Omaha, Nebraska is coming up. And I will be at Wise Guys Comedy Club in Salt Lake City on um, September 3rd and 4th. Those dates got changed. The special will be middle of September. I will have that announcement uh, sometime next week. I hope everybody has a good Fourth of July weekend, safe, happy, happy birthday to the greatest nation. Okay, on this fucking earth, don't ever yeah, fucking right. forget that either. Don't ever forget. I don't care what the it's the number one. Okay, right, You're goddamn Bye. right. Number one. You goddamn right. Number one, always, forever, always, forever. So blow up the sky. Listen to any kind of patriotic music. I'm gonna have Ray Charles America blasting all night, all day. Um, this has been episode 500. It's been so fun doing all of these, having Bobby on this, uh, second part of it and, uh, more great guests coming up, more shows coming up and uh, a lot of cool announcements. I'll talk to you guys soon.